All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to see each and every one of you. want to welcome all of you out to the One Way Assembly Bible Study on Thursday night where Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except he be drawn by him. And it's truly a blessing to see God has drawn each and every one of you out tonight. To God be the glory. God is still in the blessing business. Jehovah Rapha is still at work as well. And I know a lot of you had a great, blessed, and prosperous day as well, as much as I had as well. So much is going on, but trying to tarry on through here, and I will be able to give you a little praise report on my mom. She's doing great. Oh, yes, God is good. I guess I'll do this real briefly. Um, I was on the elevator going up yesterday. As soon as I got off on the floor, I made a quick right turn, and lo and behold, I saw someone walking to me and it, my mother was walking up the hallway and I got on my knees and I said, mama, you remember when I used to be little, I walked to you, but it's amazing that you're walking to me now. So I was just so overjoyed seeing that God has restored her. She's walking, she's up, she's doing things. When I saw that phone book out with those glasses on, and she go ask Deb, where's my ring and my, my necklace? I said, oh, she ready to go. So to God be the glory, I will definitely uh, record uh, Sister Coleman. Thank you so much. And I'm just so ecstatic what God is doing in her life. And he's totally restoring her. But I'm quite sure God is doing some good things in all of you guys' life as well. And I'm so thankful and giving all praises and glory to God, Lord, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm going to get ready to provide us with the word of prayer so we can go into tonight's class. Hopefully you have your Bibles, whether they're on your app or cell phone or tablet. Um, you have your hardback, paperback, your actual Bibles, whatever you have. All you need is the word of God on tonight. So we're going to be doing a lot of scripture reading. To God be the glory for that. So again, it's good to see all of you. And I'm just always excited to be in God's presence with you. So at this point, I'm going to provide us with the word of prayer. So let me start this recorder and we will be here. Let's see here. Here we go. Um, All right, let us pray. Dear Father God, we come before your presence on this evening, thanking you for all your many blessings. We look to you who's the author and finisher of our faith. Master, we thank you for watching over us, our uprising, our downsetting. Throughout this day, with your traveling grace, you've been so good to us, better than we have been to our own selves. And Lord, we thank you for every member every person via Facebook Live or every Zoom listener, viewer, and caller. We invite your Holy Spirit into this place to illuminate and show us your holy and divine word. Lord, we thank you and proclaim all the victory that has been allowed and given to us by your majesty. Lord, we just come asking forgiveness for all of our sins and all of our transgressions. Lord, we then come asking forgiveness for all unconfessed sin. Lord, we just ask that you cover us in the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you so much, and we ask all these blessings in the matchless, priceless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So it's good to see all of you, as we can say, I guess, um, what? Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to see everybody again. I'm just... Oh, thankful to be here tonight. I'm watching God do some amazing work. I see your sister, Loretta Givens. To God be the glory. Good to see my Facebook family coming on in. So with that said, um, hopefully you have your uh, Bibles tonight. As you know, we began this journey in the beginning of the year. Talking about building your house on a solid ground in 2024. And a lot of us have already been hit by a few storms, a little bit of rain, a little bit of drizzle. There's so much going on, but you have to make sure your foundation is laid correctly. And it has to be like a wise builder. 
Jesus spoke the parable in Matthew chapter seven, where he talked about two builders. One is a wise builder and the other one is a foolish builder. It's good to see uh, my sister princess with us tonight. Brother Marquis, come on in. It's good to see everybody. Come on in on Facebook. So again, Jesus distinguishes two different types of builders and you must have tools to build, but your tools are basically your ears to listen what thus saith the Lord has said. So you must be a wise builder because you don't want to be a foolish builder because the Greek word for foolish is moros, where we get the English word moron from. So we don't want any morons out there, okay? So we want to make sure we are listening and building our foundation on a strong, solid foundation, which is something will last and nothing that is like the sand. People build sand castles, right? But until the water wash ashore, it all falls down. But a lot of you might be building your foundations on just so people can see you. And that's not going to last. So to God be the glory. I'm so excited to see everybody coming on in and you're more than welcome to hit the share button, share some good with your people. Well, guess what? Our theme verse comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, where the apostle Paul lets us know that no one can lay any other foundation besides the one that is already laid. Well, I don't know what you've laid already. Hopefully you've laid the foundation, which is Jesus Christ. That's what Paul said. But I know some people got their foundations laid on their credit. Some people got their foundations laid on some money. People got their foundations laid on how many followers they got. I don't know what you got your foundation laid on, but you better make sure that it's laid on the G Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So with that said, we still working with building a strong foundation in 2024. How's your foundation tonight? Well, you better make sure it's strong because tonight's lesson has a very interesting twist and theme to it. We've been talking about listening, 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 and it's amazing how many people do not listen. People be right in front of your face. You're on the phone. You do so much, but nobody still listens. And when you come to church, you got all these distractions. You're looking over here. You're looking over there. You're looking behind you. Stay focused where the word is coming from. Some pastors get distracted too. Yeah, but anyway, are you listening like Jesus Christ tonight? Let me say that again. We have to make sure you are listening just like Jesus Christ. You see, words play a key role in almost everything we do. Let me say that again. Words play a key role in almost everything we do. We have to talk. We have to write. We have to type. We have to email. We got to text and use words in some form of communication every day. Now, did you go through this day and didn't say nothing to nobody? Well, we need to do something about that. You see, many of us hear words in our dreams. Whoa, that's a little deep right there, hearing words in your dreams. Yeah. You see, it is no wonder the Gospel of John intended to build our faith and confidence in Jesus Christ. He introduced Jesus as the Word. Wait, let's rewind that. Did you hear what I just said? In the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, he intended to build our faith and confidence in Jesus Christ. But guess what? He introduced Jesus, the Savior of the world, as the Word. He said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see, it is not simply a title. What Jesus said and what he did are tied inseparably to who he is. His words literally held and continued to hold the power of eternal life. Yes, it did. And it is no wonder that Jesus 
came to seek and to save that which was lost. And don't wonder how John, the gospel of John intended to build our faith in Jesus. Allow me, as I set the stage, to discuss an important aspect of communication and a perfect example. You see, the Greek term used to describe Jesus in the first chapter of John is logos. That's L-O-G-O-S. Capital, the word, the word, implying the very thought or reason of God or God's total message. You see, God made himself known in and by his spoken utterances as the word became flesh and made his presence and dwelling among us. That's John 1 and 14, by the way. Good to see you, uh, Brother Patrick. Come on in here. It's good to see you. See, because that Jesus said and did are tied inseparably to who he is. The total message of God was demonstrated to the world throughout time via Jesus' life, death, and his resurrection. Yes, included in his brief life was his ability to communicate the enduring message of God's grace. He was able to seamlessly articulate his father's will to us in a brief period of time for 33 years on the planet Earth. Isn't that something? You see, it is not new that in relationships and in our communities, including government and businesses, what we call the soft skill of communication is held in high esteem. You see, what might be surprising is that one of the essential communication skills Jesus demonstrated was listening. Oh, God is the master of listening because throughout the Old Testament, he heard all the prayers that was prayed. In the New Testament, he heard all the prayers that was prayed. And even in the dispensation age of grace, he is still listening tonight at 718 on the nose. You see, Jesus was an expert listener. Yes, he was. You see, he engaged with people throughout scripture by paying attention and digging a little deeper to find out what was going on beyond their words. Think about the irony. Jesus, the word, also gave his full attention to hear the people he interacted with. Yes, he did. Let me tell you something. When the woman with an infirmity touched his cloak, in Matthew chapter nine, that's the tassel that the priests would normally have at the bottom of their robe. You see, we're told that Jesus turned and saw her. Let me slow this down for you for a minute. You see, after she touched his cloak, Jesus turned and saw her. Did he see you today? Are you looking to be seen or you wanna be seen by somebody else tonight? You see, before speaking, he gave her his full attention. Despite the number of people around him, Jesus stopped and looked at the rich young ruler, whom we're told in Mark chapter 10 had fallen at his feet to ask, good teacher, what must I do to be saved? Does somebody want to be saved tonight? Are you saved tonight? Are you thankful tonight? Are you born again tonight? Are you blessed by the blood of the lamb, Jesus Christ. Good to see you, Sister Fayreen Hollins. It's good to see my Dr. Khalid right there. Yeah, y'all come on in and sit on down. You see, we can be certain the look was directed specifically at the young man, as we're told. Jesus looked at him and loved him. Jesus was already aware of the love the young ruler had of his money and his good. He couldn't separate himself from his bag, y'all. Yet Jesus gave his full attention to listen to the ruler's request and personal list of good deeds. Then Jesus spoke the truth in love. That's what God specializes in. He listens carefully so he can hear you out and make sure you get what you may or what you may not need. 
See, God knows what you need tonight. See, a lot of us got a lot of wants. Do you really need that though? I know you got a lot of requests. Do you really need what you asking for? Some of y'all got too much and you trying to get rid of it. Listen, paying attention when the disciples later asked each other, who then can be saved? That's a good question because Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible for someone rich to enter the kingdom of God. But with God, all things are possible tonight. Yes, it is. You better turn to somebody. You better text somebody and say, listen, all things are possible with God, but some of y'all are impossible to deal with. I know you are. Listen, the King James Version translates that Jesus beheld them. You know what that word beheld means? It means to look at them. Jesus looked. And the, that Jesus looked at them intently as he answered their question. Listen, I can't help but note how deliberate Jesus was by allowing questions to be asked before giving such thoughtful and on-point answers. You see, he modeled being quick to listen, slow to speak. But I know a lot of y'all don't model that. Y'all quick to say something, but do not listen at all. Let me say that again. He modeled being quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. Though the rich young ruler walked away instead of placing salvation ahead of his wealth, ahead of his bag, ahead of his money, ahead of his credit score, ahead of his 401k, ahead of their bank account, your cars, your money, whatever you got, he walked off. You see, in Mark's gospel account, as Jesus and his disciples were walking alone, he asked them, who do people say I am? You know why he asked them that? Because he know they hang around people and the latest gossip is out there. You hear what people think of Christians. You hear what people think of churches. You hear what people think of you. Listen, Jesus says, who do people say that I am? That's a set up question because the disciple repeated various answers. But Jesus pressed in by asking, but who do you say I am? And that's a good question tonight. Who do you say that Jesus is? Who do you say that I am? I'm not going to ask you to respond because do you know who he is? You hear what other people think. You hear what other people say, but I need to pull over and ask you at 723. Who do you say that he is tonight? Inviting them away from the heresy, the gossip, to search their own hearts. And somebody need to search their heart tonight. As Jesus gave his full attention to those around him, and zero in with questions to invite soul-searching conversations. Do you have a soul-searching conversation with people in your circle or your square or your rectangle? He also demonstrated his expertise as a listener by mirroring and paraphrasing. You see, mirroring the emotion on one occasion, a friend of Jesus Lazarus lay dead in a tomb. His sisters went outside the village to meet Jesus. One sister, Mary, fell at his feet weeping, as were others around her. Y'all remember Mary and Martha? He said, Mary, don't you weep. Martha, don't you moan. Y'all know there's a difference between weeping and moaning. That might be a whole nother class. You see, as there were others around here, they said, where have you laid him? Jesus wants to know, where did y'all lay him? He asked, come and see, Lord, they replied, whether emphasizing with their grief or trouble at their unbelief 
in his ability to do anything. You see, when you don't know what you're talking to, a lot of people don't know what they're talking about. When you're looking for things, you don't even know what you're looking at. But Jesus openly wept alongside them. That's why that's the shortest Bible verse in the entire Bible. Jesus wept. I think that's John eleven forty six. 46, I think. Listen, Mary and Martha didn't know what to look for. But what they was looking for, it was right in front of them. What they was talking about, you can talk to. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. This is what he does. That's what his name is. He said, I am the resurrection. See, but they believed in the philosophy as Sadducees do. They really believe in the afterlife at the last resurrection. But let me tell you something. If you got Jesus in your presence, he can do it right now. You see, he did me April 18th, 1993. He resurrected me because I was dead in trespassing of sins. I was going to hell. Yes, if the Lord would have caught me in 1992 on down, that's it. That was it. I don't care. But he found me. I wasn't looking for him. He had already set this up. So when you know Jesus, he changes things in your life. Your life is not the same when Jesus Christ enters your life. Good to see you, Sister Conda Scott. Oh, that's my sister Deanna. Good to see y'all. Listen, as Jesus asked the woman at the well questions and primed a conversation, and he paraphrased her, answered after he asked her to go in to get her husband. Oh, this is the good part of the lesson. Let me share something with you. Did y'all know this conversation that Jesus had with this woman right here? Oh, yeah, this is a good one because Jesus asked the woman at the well questions and primed a conversation. That means he set her up. He paraphrased her after the answer. He asked her to go and get your husband. Oh, y'all know this one. Guess what she said? I don't have a husband. The woman replied, but Jesus repeated her words, giving the full meaning of her answer. Jesus so sharp. You know what Jesus said? Listen, Jesus said, go and get your husband. She said, I don't have one. You know what Jesus said? You're right. Ding, 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 ding. Yes, you don't have a husband. But you know what Jesus did? He said, for you have one, two, three, four, five husbands. Wait a minute. You have five husbands? Some of y'all, let me leave y'all alone. See, I might mess with y'all for some of a minute. The man you with now, is he really yours? Is the husband you with, is he really yours? Is that wife you with really yours? Yeah, I got to ask some questions tonight because Jesus told her, you have five husbands tonight. Yes, he did. He said, you got five husbands and you aren't even married to the man you're living with. Now, wait, wait, wait a minute. This Jesus buffing and he's checking somebody like that on the spot. Jesus listened to her. He listened before he went in. Very politely, I might say. Listen, he said, you don't have a husband. That's right, you don't. But he says, for you have five husbands and these husbands must be married because he could have said, you have five men. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He said, you have five husbands and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Yes, he did. Hearing Jesus repeat her short answer was truthful meaning and without condemnation. She began to believe he was who he said he was. Oh, yes, he is who he is. Do you know who he is tonight? One of the most compelling, truthful, yet condemning things Jesus paraphrased 
is recorded at the trial of Jesus and Luke as the elders, the judges, the scribes, the Pharisees of the people, including the leading priest and the teachers of religious law shouted at Jesus. And to be quite frank, that happened on today. Yes, the Thursday, because y'all know tomorrow is Good Friday. Yes, tomorrow is Good Friday, whether you know it or not. It's a lot of good stuff on Friday. But we know that was the day that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ went to Calvary. He went to Golgotha's Hill to die for you and me. So that is good. What's so good about Friday? Yeah, so are you claiming to be the Son of God? That's the question they go ask him. Turning their question around, he replied, Jesus is shut up. Listen, he said, you say that I am. Point exactly restated. The son of God don't have to say a word, really. He turned their question around. He said, you say that I am. I love it. Point exactly made. Yes, that's what we can high five on. Sister Fareen, yeah, yeah. See, you got to understand something. He said, I am. The word masterly communicated through his spoken and demonstrated message of God's unfailing love and his faithfulness. To this day, paying full attention, asking questions, priming for deeper information, and paraphrasing to ensure the speaker's meaning is correct continues to describe an ideal model of good communication. Oh yes, we talking about listening tonight. That's all we began at the beginning of the year. We gotta make sure your foundation is strong. It's everlasting, built on a strong solid rock of the Lord Jesus Christ in his word because your tools is your ears to listen. You either a wise builder or a moron. He's one or the other. There's no classes on listening. There's no education on listening. They expect you to do it. Listen, how can I know? This is a question everybody wants to know. How can I know if I'm hearing God, hearing Satan, or hearing my own thoughts? That's three situations right there. Let me say that again. How can I know if I'm hearing God? How can I know if I'm hearing the devil, the Satan? How can I hear my own thoughts? Are you hearing your own thoughts tonight? Are you hearing Satan spitting stuff in your ear? Or are you hearing from God? Let me help you tonight. Life is full of decisions that do not have absolute, specific by name, how to do directions in the Bible. How many of hours a day should a teenager or kid spend on their screens? I need to ask some of you adults that. How much you be on TikTok? How much you on Facebook? How much you on Instagram? How much, how much? Is it okay to play certain video games? Call of Duty, Madden, NBA, Fortnite. Let me leave y'all alone. Am I allowed to go on a date with this person or a coworker? These are questions that come at you. Is it okay to miss work because I stayed up too late the night before watching reruns of Atlanta Housewives? What you say? Listen, we all have notions about the truth, but how do we know for sure that these ideas are coming from God? Am I hearing from God? Or am I hearing myself? Or am I hearing things? Worse yet, <coughs> am I hearing the temptations of Satan disguised as the leading of the Holy Spirit? Please, do you know what you're listening to? Do you know who you're listening to? Do you know what you're listening to? Sometimes distinguishing our own ideas from God's leading is difficult. Yes, it is sometimes. And if 
our urges are actually coming from the enemy or our souls and not from God, how do we take every thought captive then? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, always has some good instruction. That passage is a very good one because when we look to the Lord, 1 Corinthians, no, that's 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Let's see, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says what? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We aren't sure where the thoughts are coming from. I know you're not. What's really going on up in there in your mind? What's going on up there? They always say a mind is a terrible thing to race. They also say an idle mind is the devil's workshop. And I'm trying to figure out, are you hiring for that little workshop up there? You got an application in? Can somebody put an application up there or somebody else already at work up there? Listen, most commonly, God communicates through the Bible. His inspired word preserved through the centuries for us today. Every instruction comes from the word of God. It is through the word that we are sanctified. And the word is a light for our path. That's why some of y'all walking in darkness now because you don't have the light of the word to light up the path for you. God can also guide us through circumstances. Yes, he can. 2 Corinthians 2 and 12, the prompting of the spirit that's talked about in Galatians 5 and 16 and the godly mentors providing wise counsel. If God wants to speak to us, Nothing can stop him. Let me say that again. If God wants to speak to us, nothing can stop him. He can intervene at any moment at any time. Yes, he can. Well, guess what? I'm going to know I'm going to help y'all tonight as we come, as I'm looking at the clock. We're making definitely good time. See, God is so good with this timing thing. I'm so excited. Good to see you, Dr. Larry Perkins. That's my doctor right there. You see, here are some ways to discern the source of our thoughts. I said, how do you know if you're hearing from God? How do you know if you're hearing from the devil? How do you know if you're hearing from people? How do you know to hear from yourself? Well, here are some ways to discern the source of our thoughts. So a man thinketh, so he is. So you see, a lot of our thoughts, when you alone by yourself, I always tell you, when you by yourself, that's who you really are. You don't need nobody to tell you who you are, what you need to improve on when you by yourself. What's on your mind? Is he on your mind? Is she on your mind all the time? Are they on your mind all the time? Is that on your mind all the time? Is this on your mind all the time. I don't know what's on your mind, but listen, it has a lot to do with your thoughts. Listen, very often, Jesus asks questions as a way of inviting people to share their thoughts and feelings. Jesus was the mastermind behind conversation. As Jesus sat by a well at noon day, noon day, he purposely asked a Samaritan woman for a drink of water. Y'all know Samaritans don't talk to Jews. Her surprise at the request by a Jewish man asking her for anything made her curious. And their converged conversation potency grew from there. They weren't even supposed to be talking to her. But you know Jesus, which is God in the flesh, he has something to say. He wants to talk to you. He woke you up this morning to talk to you and you grabbed your phone and text somebody else and said, good morning. Isn't that something? He woke you up today 
to be about your father's business, but you was in somebody else's business and doing your own thing. Give God some time. Talk to him. He's ready to listen. Listen, number one, we are talking about here are some ways to discern the source of our thoughts. Number one, whoo, somebody please pray. Number one is pray tonight. I'm going to say tonight. <laughs> Number one is to pray. If we are confused about whether or not we are hearing from God, it is good to just pray for wisdom. Oh, yes. And James said, he'll give it to you if you ask for it. It's good to pray for wisdom even when we don't think we're confused. See, there's no need for confusion. Be prayed up, stayed up in your word study. But I know one thing. If you don't know who you hearing from, please pray. That's what you got to do. Number one, we should ask God to make his will known to us clearly. If you don't understand the word, ask him. When we pray, we must believe and no doubt should be nowhere in jurisdiction because the one who doubts is like a wave at the sea blown and tossed by the wind. James 1 and 6 says that if we have no faith, we should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Don't even bother praying because if you don't have any faith, that's the whole point. Faith is seeing your request done before it even happened. Talk to God in prayer and earnestly wait for his answer. Just like if you hold a conversation with somebody, somebody talking to you, and they finish asking you a question, and they just talk, take off before you can even answer. See, a lot of y'all pray, and y'all get up too fast. A lot of you pray, do not listen for God to speak back. Stay put, be quiet, remain seated, stay on your knees till you hear from God. However, though, in the mind that God doesn't give us everything we desire, and sometimes his answer is no. They always say, God will say yes, no, or wait. Let me tell you something. When God tell you no, that's a good yes to me because he knows what you need. He knows what we need at any given time, and he will show us what is best. If God says no, then we can thank him for the clarity of his direction and move on from there. But I know y'all still want to deal with some people and God didn't already told you what to do. That's why you're going through it. Oh, guess what? Number two, number one is what? Pray. Number two is study the word. The Bible is called God's word for a reason. It is the primary way God speaks to us. It is also the way we learn about God's character and his dealings with his people throughout history. All scripture is what? Breathed out by God and is the guide for a righteous life. That's why some of your life is messed up. You don't have the word of God as your guide. You got some dude, some man, some woman running your life. While we speak to God in prayer, he speaks to us through his word. As we read, we must consider the words of the Bible to be the very words of God. We can praise God on that one. You see, any thought, any desire, any inclination, or urge we may have must be brought to us by the word of God for comparison and approval. See, a lot of you don't use the word of God as a measuring rod for what you're trying to do and get done in your life. Let the Bible be the judge of every thought, for the word of God is alive and active. Yes, it is. It's active. Is sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates 
even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and bone marrow, all the way down to the core. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Hebrews 4 and 12 says, no matter how urgent the urge, if it goes against what scripture says, <clears throat> then it is not of God and must be rejected. Yes, it is. And guess what? Here's another one. Number one, you must pray. Number two, study the word. And here's number three. Number three is what? Follow the Holy Spirit's leading. Yes, the Holy Spirit is God, a divine being with a mind, emotions, and a will. He is always with us. His purposes include interceding for us, which he makes groanings and intercession on our behalf. In other words, as we pray, he takes our prayer and takes it to the Father and presents it to him. And giving gifts to benefit the church. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In other words, it goes through the functions, all what the Holy Spirit duties are and job description. That's also found in John 15 and 16 as well. You see, the Holy Spirit wills to fill us. I always ask the Lord to fill me for his service. Some of y'all need a filling. Yeah, just like when you're going on a long trip, you need to go get some gas and put it in your car. You must fill it. It's a lot of you around here trying to serve God on E. Did you ask God to fill you today? Fill you with his spirit? Fill you with his word? Yes, it's the same thing. That's why a lot of you need small checks. Your emissions is bad. Some of y'all tags expired and produce in us his fruit, Galatians 5 and 22. See, the fruit of the spirit is moved by the fruit of the Holy Ghost. No matter what decisions you're making day to day, we can't go wrong when we exhibit love, when we exhibit joy, when we exhibit peace, when we exhibit glory of the Father. When we have a random thought that pop up in our heads, we must learn to test the spirits. See, a lot of y'all thoughts are wild. Let me mess with some of y'all. Y'all remember when Rihanna said wild, wild thoughts? See, I don't know what your thoughts on now. See, I could just throw something out there and you're thinking about it now. What if I just say pancakes, peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Spark plug. Let me leave y'all alone. See, it's so easy to get distracted, but you have to make sure your mind is stayed on Jesus. I'm not finna mess with y'all random thoughts that pop up in your head. Somebody got something else on their mind right now. In class right now. Yes, you do. Listen, you need to test the spirits by the spirits, whether they be of God. Will following this inclination lead to more Christ-likeness? I hope it does. Will dwelling on this thought produce more of the fruit of the Spirit in me or you and I? Listen, the Holy Spirit will never lead us to gratify the sinful desires of the flesh. He will not do it. He will always lead us towards sanctification. Life on earth is a spiritual battle. The enemy is eager to supply diversions to distract us from God's will. See, a lot of y'all distracted now. Some of y'all probably texting somebody. Somebody got, got the television on in the background. Listen, you can't do both at the same time. Well, that's your business. We must be vigilant to ensure that we, we, we take heed, which is more than a feeling, but is truly from God himself. This is more serious, y'all. Remember, God wants to show us the right path to take. He is not in the business of hiding his will from those who seek him. If you seek in him, he said he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. That's what he said. Listen, here are some good questions to ask 
as we examine whether or not we are hearing from God. Let me say that again. Here are some good questions to ask as we examine whether or not we are hearing from God. We're trying to see if you really hear from God. Listen, are the promptings of confusion, are they vague? Y'all know God is not the author of confusion. He is the bringer of peace. 1 Corinthians 14, 33. Do your thoughts go against God's word? God will not contradict himself. Will following these promptings lead to sin? Those who keep in step with the spirit have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. That's Galatians 5, 24 and 25. In addition, it is good to seek counsel from a Christian friend, if you got one, a family member that's in Christ, or a pastor. You see, Proverbs 15, 22, our pastors are there to help as shepherds, to shepherd us. Have confidence in your leader, in your pastor, in your bishop, and submit to their authority. Why? Because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. That's Hebrews 13 and 7. Being a, being a pastor, I have to always keep the flock that God has given me before him at all cost. And I'm praying for all of you on Facebook. I'm praying for all of you on Zoom tonight. I appreciate all your undivided attention at all times. I see my, my good brother, Minister Ryan Nash. That's my good minister buddy. We grew up at Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church. Yes, good to see my brother here. You see, God does not want to fail us. The more we listen to God, the better we will be at distinguishing his voice from other noises in our heads and all that stuff going on in your mind. You see, Jesus is the good shepherd who gives his promise to us. He goes on ahead of them and his sheep will follow him because they know his voice. Do you know his voice tonight? Are you a sheep or are you a goat? Y'all know goats are always in front of the shepherd and with sheep, the sheep are always in back of the shepherd. Did y'all know that? Goats will not be led by anything. They do the leading for that particular shepherd. See, there's two different types of shepherd. There's a shepherd that leads sheep. Then there are shepherds that are being led by goats. Isn't that interesting? Others may speak, but the sheep do not listen to them. That's verse eight. See, the better we know our shepherd, the less we have to worry about heeding the wrong voice. See, I'm not going to ask you, do you know your pastor? Do you have a pastor? Do you need a pastor? Everybody should be at a church. You should be fellowshipping somewhere, okay? But let me pull over for a minute because y'all know tomorrow is Good Friday, right? And I know a lot of you are planning Maybe, maybe not going to church. You must understand something. There are 52 Sundays a year. And the Sunday that is approaching is what builds all the other 51 Sundays of the year, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It doesn't have anything to do with the Easter Bunny. It doesn't have anything to do with the Cadbury eggs. It doesn't have nothing to do with Easter baskets. It doesn't have anything to do with the Easter egg hunt. Let me slow y'all roll. Listen, stop thinking you need to go find something extravagant to where you go spend all this money for two hours. Then a lot of you want to run in there late to be seen. Instead of turning and having a seat, no, you want to come down the walkway. I mean, the run. I don't know if y'all want to turn the aisle into a runway or a walkway in your church. We got to stop this, people. We got to do better than this. This is Resurrection Sunday. 
I understand everybody likes saying happy Easter, but did you not know Easter is the name of Istar, which her name is Simi Ramis. That's Nimrod's wife. She had a son born nine months from the month of April when you end up in December. That was her son that was born on December 25th. That's a pagan holiday too. Why is it that on Resurrection Sunday, but when you don't know no better, it's okay, you need to learn and do better. It's Resurrection Sunday. Why are we calling her name out? Y'all know who this lady is. Y'all didn't see her. Did anybody go to Starbucks this morning? The lady on the cup, that's Simi Ramis. That's Easter. That's Esther. Same woman. Yeah, you seen her. Let me remind you, when you watch a movie on Netflix, when you see the universal pictures come up, that's her without her crown. And lastly, let me give you one good one. Easter, Esther, Sammy Ramis is the same woman that sits outside New York on Ellis Island, the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, that's her. Same woman. So when you say happy Easter, you just call it her name. See, I'm going to work with some of this stuff on Sunday because I did it last year and I'm going to do it again till you understand. Stop being a movement of paganism. Stop this. We talking about Christmas and all this stuff. Why is it that when that time comes around, Santa Claus, the Strosty the Snowman, Rudolph, what are you doing? He wasn't even born in December. That was Easter's son that was born by Nimrod. Y'all better read your Bibles. Genesis 11, Nimrod had a wife. Her name was Instar Sidney Ramis. She was the moon goddess because she came from the moon traveling in an egg. That's where the Easter eggs come from. I'm not going to do this with y'all and play with y'all tonight. Nimrod was killed by a wild boar. That's why you have ham. I guess you want to serve ham on Sunday. Let me leave y'all alone. Listen, paganism is trying to hide the true riches of God's son, Jesus Christ. Go through this all the time. Guess what? God is good. Guess what? It's 757. We three minutes shy of eight o'clock because four plus four is what? It's eight and it's eight o'clock, just about two minutes. To God be the glory. I love y'all so much. Let's give God some praise. We made it on tonight. Good to see everybody. I love y'all so much. Good to see all my folks who stopped by tonight on Facebook. Man, it's good to see y'all. Love y'all so much. Let me give you your word for the week tonight. And your word for the week is always something, just a little something to share with you. You see, the word for the week is what tonight? Life is way too short. You should smile while you have your teeth. Oh, yeah. Let me say that again. Life is way too short. You should smile, cheese, while you have your teeth. Because y'all know there's coming a time, because in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, Solomon says, when the grinders cease, because they will be few. See, grinders, he's speaking wisdom. Your teeth are the grinders. He goes through a whole illustration what the body goes through before it's put back in the ground six feet deep. Y'all should try that chapter 12 of the book of Ecclesiastes. Good stuff. So again tonight, the word for the week is life is too short. You should smile thing, while you have your teeth. So to God be the glory. I love y'all so much. Yes, we're going to get ready to move into the Lord's discerning of his body. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me to show forth my death and suffering till I come again. So all you have to do is if you have a piece of bread, a little piece of bread, cracker, and some juice, that's all you need to discern the Lord's body with us tonight. This is the best part of Bible study tonight is discerning the Lord's body. And I'm so excited. It's good to see all my Facebook family in the house with us tonight. Roland, yes, love y'all so much. Amen. So with that said, going to give us a closing prayer so we can transition for a prayer of sanctification to clean us up. Well, guess what? Let us pray. 
the Father God, we thank you so much for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard on tonight. You have been so good to us better than we've been to our own selves, Master. Lord, we look to you who's the author and finisher of our faith. We cannot do anything without you whatsoever. Lord, we thank you for the word tonight. We thank you for studying with us tonight, allowing us to venture into your word, that we can build a better, stronger foundation because the rain is coming. The storms are coming. The winds are coming to beat up against our foundation that should be strong as Jesus Christ. And they're coming. Some of us have already been hit. And it's only the third month, Lord Jesus. Help us on tonight. Lord, we thank you for every Zoom listener, viewer, and caller. We thank you for every Facebook person that stopped by to fellowship with us tonight. Whether they were just in transition, moving through the news feed, we thank you for their presence for that moment. Lord, again, you are so worthy to be praised. Father, I thank you for still watching over my mother. We call on your name, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee, that you still are doing what your name is doing for her. That's why we call on your name. She calls on your name. Your saints are calling on your name for her, on her behalf. And Lord, we thank you because you're so good. We cannot do anything without you. But on tonight, Father, whatever was said, we ask that you implant it on good ground that it may bring forth some 30, some 60, some hundredfold. Father, we thank you again. We ask all these blessings in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. And Father, as we pray this prayer of consecration and sanctification in this process, Lord, we ask that you forgive us for all of our sins and all of our transgressions. Father, we ask that you remove anything that's not right within our hearts, spirit, minds, and our souls. Lord, if we looked at somebody, said something, or thought something inappropriately, please forgive us. Lord, forgive us for all of our sins of omission and sins of commission. Father, forgive us for any unconfessed sin. Lord, we thank you on tonight that you are cleaning us up right now, that you can present us faultless. Cover us redeem us to proclaim us to be justified just as if I had not sinned. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's Romans 5 and 1, Lord. We thank you for that. But tonight, as we prepare to discern your body, Lord, we thank you. We ask all these blessings in the matchless, priceless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. It's good to see everybody. So again, let me get the sacraments together on this side. And I'll be right back. Stand by. Hey, man, we are back. And I have one brief announcement at the end of this class and after communion. So Lord, as we hold this bread, this is symbolic of your body. When you broke the bread, you distributed it to the 12. And you said, do this in remembrance of me to show forth my death and suffering till I come again. And he said, take you all of it and eat. And they all did eat. And Lord, we did this not for the nourishment for these mortal bodies, but we did this for the nourishment for the soul. And Father, as we hold this fruit of the vine, which is symbolic of your blood that was shed for the New Testament and the New Covenant, when you poured this fruit of the vine, you told your disciples to do this in remembrance of me to show forth my death and suffering till I come again. You said, drink ye all of it, and they all did drink. Lord, we did this not for the nourishment for these mortal bodies, but we did this for the nourishment for the soul, far as your body and your blood representation. And Lord, we thank you so much. 
because we already know it was only the blood. But at this moment, I'm going to give us a good invitation to something that is going on Saturday at three o'clock in the city of Richmond. And as you notice here, this is the Power Prayer Hour World Ministry fourth year celebration that will be happening. And the title is Serve the Lord with Gladness. This will be happening at Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church, 831 South 43, South 43rd Street in Richmond, California. And the pastor there is my brother, Eric Morris. Have some good singing will, that will be in the house. We have Anthony Easton, Iris McMorris. We have Willie Kelly. We have Coco Webster, First Lady Morris, Sheila Morris. We have David Harfield in the house. And we also have the Antioch Baptist Church of Oakland praise team. So if you're not doing nothing this Saturday, which you probably not, you might be doing something else. But listen, if you could find your way by Pilgrim Rest at three o'clock, please come on through because God is going to bless you. This is a celebration of four years up. Every Monday night, there's a prayer meeting going on on Derek Jackson's Power Prayer Hour prayer line. And I'm going to tell you, we wouldn't have made it this far without these prayers. I tell you, he stands as the mediator, the intercessor, making the plea on behalf of all of us. And look how good God is. It started with five names on this list. Guess how many names on there now? 624 names. And all are individually called out. So when he's on number 367, he still got more to go. Every name is called out and God hears it. So if you need some prayer to change your situation, you better get on that list and you better get out there Saturday at three o'clock at Pilgrim Rest. Hope to see y'all there. Love y'all so much. So to God be the glory. Any other questions or comments? Before we wrap up tonight, it's good to see my people. I love y'all so much. Can't do this without you. Yes, Mr. Salsa, thank, thank, thank you for this lesson. Yes. Walking. Give her my love. Oh, yes, most definitely. Uh, some of you probably didn't, wasn't on when I first shared. Uh, Mama is doing great. Um, as I said in the beginning, I was coming up the elevator. And, you know, I'm just getting ready to walk to the room. I hit that corner. And lo and behold, she's walking up the up the room, up the hallway. And all I could do is drop to my knees. I said, mama, you remember when I was walking to you when I was little? Well, yes. guess what? You're walking to me now. So it was just a great celebration. The family was there. So we had a great joyous occasion of time that day. She's eating well. She's going to the restroom, walking. And when I knew something was up, because when I saw her, had her phone book out with her glasses on, making phone calls. I said, oh, we rolling like that? We doing it like this? Amen. And I can imagine if whoever she was calling to hear her voice after what she been through, she been through some stuff. But God has kept her. She calls out his name, Jehovah Rapha. She's doing this thing called adoration. And I tried to explain it. The best way that I can, because a lot of people can pray. A lot of people can worship. Let me tell you something. Adoration is totally different from both of those. See, adoration comes from the short word adore. And when it says, the songwriter that says, let heaven and earth adore him. When the heavens don't have a mouth. The earth doesn't have a mouth, but when God's people learn how to adore him, you're not asking him for anything. You are in a adoration of adoring him. In other words, you basically calling out what he does, who he is, whether he does something or not. He's God all by himself. So that's what she does for hours, which is totally astonishing because my niece didn't know what it was called. She called and said, Mama is, is repeating these words over and over again. I said, Tay, what did she say? What is she saying? She's saying love, 
joy, peace. I said, Tay, that's the fruit of the spirit. She's saying things like he's omnipotent. He's holy. Man, let me tell you something. When you learn to adore God, he eats that up. He eats it up and he's going to come see about you. Other than that, to God be the glory. I love y'all so much. I don't want to take up all of y'all guys' time. I know y'all got stuff to do. Y'all got shows to watch. Y'all got places to go, people to see. Y'all got stuff to do out there. It's all good. Tell them you'll call them back. Text them now. You good. You clear for takeoff. Do your thing. Anyway, I love y'all so much. I love y'all. To God be the glory. Let me tell you something. If you're not doing nothing Sunday, come on through or see us right here on Facebook Live. We got you covered from head to toe back and forth, underneath and to the side. We got you covered. Love y'all so much. To God be the glory. Y'all be blessed now. Love y'all so much. And y'all know it was nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. That's it. I know it was the blood. That's it. I know it was the blood. I know it was his blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died from the cross. See all these people on mute. Go ahead, Minister Daisy. I can't live by yourself, dear. <laughs> Only the blood of Jesus. All right now. Only the blood of Jesus is what keep him on safe. Yes. Jehovah it within our hearts that when these times come, that we yes. can let the enemy know that Jesus is real and he's keeping us. No matter how he tried to keep us down, he was conquered on the cross. When Jesus died, he rose again. And to show that we have life and have it more abundantly. And we can praise him and thank him for all that he's doing for us, what he's done and what he's about to do. We give him all the glory. Thank you for the lesson tonight. All right. Joe, I love your word for the week. I know that's right. If we got them teeth, you better smile now. <laughs> Even if you got, let me let me mess with some of y'all. Even if you got to put them in, even if they fall out while you smile, you hear the smile. Understand? Right. So what? You smiling and they drop. Well, guess what? You hear so they can drop. You're wrong, you're wrong. Yeah. See, it's all good. What's that? Infinite holiday? Crazy glue? I don't know what it is. Long as you here to say hallelujah. You can gum it too and say, hallelujah. Listen, y'all better give him some praise while you can. Let me leave y'all alone. I love y'all. See y'all Sunday. All right. <laughs> All right now. Have a good week. You can. All right. <laughs>